Halo Outreach Podcast to keep you updated with everything going on in Halo. Welcome, friends, to episode number six of the Halo Outreach Podcast, where we reach out to you guys, the Halo community, and keep you up to date on everything going on in the Halo universe. We have quite a topic-filled podcast for you guys today. We're going to go over some Flight 2 news. We're going to go over Halo Infinite losing its creative director. We're going to go over some HCS grassroots things. Uh, flight ring tracker that you guys can keep track of what's going on with the flights at home. Some official Halo 5 playlist news. And uh, Halo 2 anniversary playlist news as well. And we, of course, at the end, will update you guys uh, with the new Halo 5 modes upcoming in the week. And we also have a new job posting at Microsoft for Halo Infinite that we're going to go over. But that's a long intro. Let me get my buddy Kevin Cool in here. Say hi, Kevin. Of course, my fellow co-host. How's it going, everybody? Kevin Cool likes here. Yeah, ready to get into the, the podcasting here and get into some good uh, juicy little tidbits of news. Yeah. Kind of coalesce them all together. Serve them up in a delicious platter, steaming hot for you guys. So just eat all at once mm. and just your belly's full of information. Exactly. Yeah, we actually thought this. I mean, it was a pretty slow news week until until uh, Friday. Yeah, basically, it all just <laughs> dumped it on was us. Literally, like nothing until like three p.m. West Coast time, and then it was just like news drop, news drop, news drop. That's why I'm glad we uh, we do these podcasts on the weekends because uh, yeah. you know, we would miss out on all this stuff. It would have been a pretty boring episode for you guys. So let's get started with flight number two. Update on flight number two. I feel like we've been here before, Kevin. You want to uh, go ahead and take the lead on that one? All right, we've only been like doing this for like the last like two weeks straight now. But people want to know, man. We're we're like us as Halo fans. We're like we need to know exactly what's happening right now. Exactly. Well. Postums gave us a little update about what's actually happening right now. And so I do have a video about this coming out probably later in the week when this gets uploaded. I uh, give you more details uh, thoroughly about it. But basically, uh, Ring 2 testing has been completed when it comes to Flight 2 for uh, Halo Reach Fire Flight, if you want to call it that. And so basically what that means, it's going to go, they've resolved all the bugs that they were blocking in ring two so now what's going to happen they're going to bring it back down to ring one test everything out again to make sure that everything is running properly go back up the ring two and make sure that nothing was happening again and if that works out then it's going to go to ring three which is the halo insiders um postums does type out in this uh update saying that this build does look rather promising to be the build that we get a chance to play for halo insiders um but no no news on when it's going to be released. Or when it's how, ready. Or, yeah, when it's ready. <laughs> and no news on what the scope is going to be of how many people are going to be invited on this. I'm assuming it's going to be more. Uh, my guess would be 1,500 people maybe yeah. involved yeah. with this one. And this is going to be a PC only one still. Um, so you got that to look forward to. Um, so looking rather promising. I'm assuming my, my time frame when I think this would happen would be Friday the 23rd would be my guess. Uh, just because on uh, the 30th, the weekend of the 30th was like Memorial Day or not Memorial Day, uh, Labor Day weekend. Labor Day, yeah. It is the same weekend of PAX, and there's going to be a lot of stuff kind of going around 343. Three. Usually they do like a community day kind of thing there, which kind of gets people distracted. There's going to be people at PAX as well. So there's a lot of things going on. I don't expect them to do like a flighting test that weekend. So I would probably, possibly even next week next weekend or by the time you're listening to this podcast this weekend on like the 23rd 24th maybe even 25th to have a flight too that's my optimism right there yeah that. i could i could see that and mm -hmm. i think yeah at least 1500 to 2000 people get in i think i think we have a good chance of getting in on this one um i mean Hopefully. by <laughs> it might be even more because flight three is supposed to be the final flight uh for mm -hmm. multiplayer and stuff and by then <laughs> or, uh, the would you say flight. finish the flight Finish the flight. There we go. Hashtag oh, finish the yes. flight. Uh, which, uh, which we actually do have some flight three news involved with this as well. Yeah. As so we do know that that's going to be PVP focus. They're going to be right. testing out the networking um, algorithms, or if you want to call it that, or whatever that uh, when it comes to playing uh, PVP. The, now, the interesting thing about flight three, it's going to be Xbox only on that flight. No PC for 
uh, Flight 3. So all you Xbox boys have been crying like, what about me? Well, now you get some exclusive flight awesomeness right there. Now the PC uh, guys can start crying. Yes, exactly. Which I'd be kind of surprised they're not doing uh, PC. I yeah, think that's you, shocking. You can test that out as well, but maybe just with it being Xbox, maybe things might be a little more complicated there or something. I don't know. Uh, maybe it's maybe it's just really straightforward when it comes to PC. Yeah, it might we'll be. See. Maybe they've tested it already and it runs good, and they're pretty confident. Who knows? I guess. Hmm. I guess we'll see. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that kind of worries me, but whatever. Um, but yeah, I think, like I said, I think we have a good chance. And uh, by flight three, everybody in the insider program should be getting in if if that's the final flight. So, um, flight three should be a pretty big uh taking undertaking of of players. So I'm guessing flight two is gonna be you know obviously somewhere in between flight one and flight three. So um, I think I think we have a good chance of getting in. Here's hoping, fingers crossed, because <laughs> if I don't get to play any Halo on PC until it releases, I'm gonna be sad. Yeah, and they definitely need to make sure that they get as many people as possible involved <coughs> with Play 3 because it's very population dependent. When it, obviously, when it comes to having <clears> it being multiplayer, like when like the first one, it's just the campaign mission population count doesn't matter at all. Second one, this one kind of matters a <clears> bit more, and I think this actually might be where they're testing out the networking is with uh, matchmaking for firefight for right. PC. That's probably, probably just gonna copy and pasta that. Uh, that's probably why they're not involving PC for this one. Um, but that's a little population based, but all you need is like three other people and you got a match going. Right. Uh, this one, like they're uh, doing like a quite a lot of different testing when it comes to the networking for Flight 3. So we have like, we have social games, we have competitive games for right. uh, Halo Reach. For, so for Reach, they actually list out the maps and game modes that we're going to be playing. So they have a 2v2 matchmaking, which is going to feature the maps Countdown, Powerhouse, and Zealot, and it's only going to be Slayer. You have 4v4 matchmaking, which is only going to be on the maps Countdown, Powerhouse, Zelle, and Tempest, with the game modes of Slayer, uh, Flag, Bomb, Zone Control, Asset Denial, and Action Sack for the lulls. Hmm. And then you have uh, 8v8, so big team battles will be involved with this as well, with the maps Tempest, Breakpoint, and Ridgeline, with the game modes Slayer, Flag, uh, Bomb, Zone Control, and Asset Denial, which well, I read Asset Denial as Ball? I don't really remember being here in big team ball, but yeah, maybe that could be fun. You never know. Yeah. Um, and so that, you know, pretty basic setup right there. Nothing too crazy. The map uh, that they're choosing from a pretty, pretty small list. But again, yeah, that's really just, they really the only reason why they have the map, the different maps is just so you don't get bored within the first like 10 minutes of playing. Uh, and then for the competitive settings, we have uh, Halo Reach Team Hardcore, which is going to be, you know, these are TU, these are no sprint, no bloom settings for the hardcore, uh, for team hardcore. It's going to be the maps Countdown and Zealot, and the game modes are going to be Slayer and Capture the Flag. And then if you guys remember, Invasion is actually going to be ranked at launch for this as well, which is going to be using vanilla settings. So no TU oh, no updates title. when it comes to Invasion. And it's going to feature just Breakpoint for the map, and obviously map map in game mode variation. This is gonna be invasion. Uh, I do believe there are multiple versions of invasion right now, or at least that came in later for Halo Reach. Uh, this is gonna be just the basic invasion game mode on the map breakpoint, which is good. No, no title update because the DMR and the Magnum were after that, and on those big maps, it's just they it wouldn't create yeah. much you know, balance. So, yeah, I'm, I'm glad they decided to do that for invasion only. Mm. Um, Let's go ahead and mention the flight ring tracker while we're talking about flight, uh, flight two news. So everybody at home can basically follow along what's going on with the MCC flights and the progress that's being made. And it actually has even like a hyperlink to go to the latest community update, which is really cool. And um, we'll we'll link that down in the description below for you guys. You guys can go ahead and download that. It's a, it's on PC. I haven't tried it. If if there's a way to look at it on mobile, have you? I haven't bothered with it, but that's really just because I stay up to date so much with these right, things. Right, exactly. Like I, I have so many of the developers on like notifications on tweets and stuff like that. So like I, you know, I don't really, I don't personally need this, but I can understand where people like who's just a casual person wants to stay up to date with everything. This exactly. is a great way to great thing to use. It's like a nice little it's program like, you can download, and then you know you know exactly the status of uh. The, of, of the flight program and yeah. so so you can eventually enjoy some pizza yeah exactly the pizza <laughs> is the the final stage so 
<laughs> yeah, it's it's pretty. It's a good way to have everything all in one. So we'll link that down in the description below for you guys. But yeah, like Kevin said, we stalk the Halo pages on Twitter, and I have it bookmarked on my PC too to just refresh whenever I think that the news is going to come out. So we'll keep you guys updated if you guys you know are lazy and you don't want to update yourselves. Me and Kevin got you guys covered, and let's move on to the. Creative director being, uh, we don't know if he's fired or if he quit. Um, it made it seem like quit. I don't know. But Halo Infinite has lost its creative director. Tim Longo, who was the creative director of Halo 5 as well, has left 343 Industries to pursue other things. And there is also another shakeup there at 343. Mary Olsen will now take charge of the campaign team on Halo Infinite as the lead producer and she's been at 343 for a while. She's had several years there, but her job is to help create a great campaign for the fans. Obviously, campaign is a huge focus with Infinite, especially after the backlash of Halo 5. So let's get your thoughts on this, Kevin. Are you worried uh, that a big shakeup? I mean, creative director is a huge position uh, for a game. Are you a little bit worried about it? I personally think 343 would be fine. Uh, there's still plenty of time left in Halo Infinite's development cycle. So what do you think? I think it's fine. I mean, it ha this happens quite often when it comes to game development. Uh, people, they you know, get re reorged or they you know, either leave once their job is done kind of thing. Um, the creative director position really isn't, it's a great, it's an important position, don't get me wrong, but it's not like a lifeblood position to make or break a game. Like if Chris Lee just kind of got up and left, I'd be really concerned. Right. <laughs> But uh, this guy's under under Chris Lee. I think he's basically like the step below. Yeah, he's where, like uh, right under. He reports right to yeah. right to Chris Lee. Yeah, and Chris Lee basically gives him orders like you need to get this, this, and this done. Right. And he goes, okay, let me talk to these people. If people come back to Tim Longo, he goes, okay. Well, then he goes up to Chris Lee and goes, okay, we got this and this and this done. Right. So he's just like a middle management kind of guy, help kind of with communication between dev teams and upper management. Uh, very important position, obviously, but. Uh, and usually these kind of positions, people kind of stay on until the very end of the game. And then usually they move on to something else. Right. Uh, I think my interpretation when I read this it sound like that Tim Longo just went to a different job. He didn't just get up and quit. Yeah, he, so, uh, he went, he, well, he went to, he left 343 period. He went and no, pursued, yeah. yeah, a different job somewhere else. Yeah. And he's I like, don't it's, I, not, it's not like he just like got up and quit. He's like, F these guys, I'm out without no, any backup no, no. plan. No, no, like this is like this was a calculated move. Right, exactly. Yeah. But um yeah. I mean there is still plenty of development time, so his, obviously his job wasn't done yet. Um Yeah, but for sure. We'll see. Um Chris Lee's like I said, you know, it's it is a big blow, but it's not uh the world is ending. Three four three is plenty capable. There's I wanna say what, five hundred employees at three four three? They're pretty big uh, now. They're they're pretty big. I have yeah. no idea. If you're carrying kind of like external teams as well, or like uh, dev teams and stuff like that, then I probably maybe. Um, but that'd be pretty crazy. I think like the actual team of three four three is actually like not too big. Like they all like well, the core. They've team expanded a lot the last couple of years. Like they weren't big for Halo Five, I remember. But the last couple of years for Infinite, they've ramped up hiring a lot, from what I've heard. Yeah, well, I have well, to look up. Yeah, yeah. because like yeah, it's because well, they're going with like the live service platform kind of yeah. thing for which Halo. we'll get to uh, we'll get to later which in the podcast. Really, well. which is very labor intensive when oh, it comes yeah. to that kind of service. Uh, I mean, I actually recently watched like a Hassan Minaj. Uh, uh, if you guys ever watch him on Patriot Act uh on youtube and on netflix it's kind of like basically like netflix's daily show or mm. like john oliver kind of thing mm. and he actually goes into about like game development and like the uh um living situations of like a lot of these game developers where they just get worked their asses off you know working like 60 hour plus work weeks don't even get a chance to see their family and then once the game's out they all get laid off kind of thing it's really actually terrible to be a developer right now and so like when you're doing like games as a service things like fortnite apex legends and probably soon to be halo as well you need a lot of people so your co your sleep workers don't get overworked so that's probably why they've ballooned so much in the last it really expanded in the last few years here because uh, as of 2016 there are 450 people working at the three okay well yeah that's pretty accurate then yeah. Uh, yeah i would totally see that i see why yeah because if you're not trying to overwork your you know, your yeah. workers there i mean obviously during the development of a game it gets very bloated yeah 
Uh, you're going to have crunch and, time. You're going to have know. a lot of contract workers coming in yeah. and work on that. I mean, I wonder how many of those are like full-time employees, you know, right. that actually work for Microsoft and not just like, because I worked as a vendor at Microsoft for multiple times. I'm actually a vendor right now at Microsoft for a managed service team. Mm-hmm. Um, and so like, I'm not, I technically get paid through Microsoft, but I'm not a Microsoft employee. Right. That makes sense. Right. But yeah, a um, little sidetrack there, but obviously, so back on topic though, um, with Tim Longo leaving, yeah, it's an important position, but it's not the end of the world. No. People people come and go during yep. development. It's pretty standard. Um, this is the first time I've heard anything negative when it comes to, and if this is even really a negative, you know, right. it's more just a change rather than... Depends on how you look at it. Negative. I mean, this is the guy it's, who created, he was the creative director for <laughs> Halo 5's campaign. So if you weren't a fan yeah. of that campaign, then you might be like, woohoo! But it, it's, it's, more, it, yeah, it's more of a change rather than a negative or positive. It's exactly. just different. <laughs> yeah. yeah, a change of direction. Maybe 343 didn't like his vision or where he was taking things. And they said, you know what, we need a, you know, I think we have a disagreement here and we need a, somebody else to come in. Or or maybe he already got, you know, really had enough time in where he can say Halo Infinite on his resume and got a job that paid for <laughs> There you go. There you go. Now he's like a studio boss or something. It's like, did you not see those trailers? They look amazing, right? This game is going to be good. <laughs> it's going to be great. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so that we'll wrap up that topic and uh, move on to the grassroots stuff that I know Kevin is very passionate about. So I'll let you take the lead on this. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually recently on Friday, Tashi just put on Twitter saying big announcement in 20 minutes, like towards the end of the day. I'm like, ooh, new event. And like, no, even different. Uh, there's going to, you know, how basically we have a bunch of, we have a bunch of grassroots co- content creators now, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's some, something around, uh, what, what's the number like? eight plus people, 12 people, something like that. Yeah. Uh, it started before they were just kind of retweeting streams and videos for like the HDS Twitter when stuff would happen. But now basically this, the amount of people that have been added into HDS is kind of like overwhelming the Twitter feed, you know, where they're kind of similar to kind of combining streams all in one tweet kind of thing. Cause you know, a lot of, they're, a lot of these guys are like full-time or these major, you know, 40 hour work week, like streamers kind of guys. So mm-hmm. now what they've done now is uh, consolidated all their streams, all their content, Twitter feeds, thing, and events, things like that have all been consolidated onto this one website, which is live.halo.gg. Basically there is a one-stop shop for all your grassroots content um, you know, needs. Uh, you can check out their streams, you can check out their YouTube videos, yeah, okay, so you can check out their Twitter feeds and events and things like that all on this website here. It's actually pretty cool. You can watch their streams within the website as well and interact through a chat on the website itself. So it's all self-sufficient. You don't even have to go to their actual pages to enjoy their content, uh, which well, all the people that are on this list for grassroots, I say you definitely need to go subscribe to those people or follow them in some way because they're all good guys that you know make great content. Uh, so I think it's a really great thing that 343 has helped put together. It helps really, I was worried like how grassroots program was going to scale up because obviously with the new round, that's probably going to be going to be announced in September, October, somewhere down there, you have, you'll have some new content creators uh, being added to the list there, which probably put the number up to like what, 16-ish people now or something like that. Yeah. So it's going to be you know a decent amount of people, a good chunk of people on this list. And so... Uh, it's nice. It's a good place to have a one consolidated one stop shop if you want to like, stay up to date with all your grassroots hotness. And so, yeah, definitely. Want, if, say, if you guys want to check that out, definitely want to. If you want to check out some streams or YouTube videos, go to there. You, 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 everything on there is going to be good. You're going to want to check it out for sure. But yeah, that's good. about it. Yeah, it's a really good thing. Yeah, I, like I think it's a really cool way to just to have everything all in one place. It's very clean looking, it runs well. So, um... mm-hmm. Yeah, it's However, very it's very intuitive. Yeah, um, yeah like I say it's it, it's fl- like it's not laggy or slow or anything like that. It does kind of look like they use like the restream. Uh, if you guys ever bother with that, like restream as a service when it comes to like their interface a little bit because it does look very similar. Mm. Maybe they just copy and paste the code. I don't know, but uh, we'll just see there. But it, but that's just me just kind of noticing things. But yeah, it's a really great thing. Uh, looking forward to it. Maybe your boy here will get added into the next wave. You don't know. Yeah, I did. True. I did. I, I did apply. I did apply. But the competition's rather stiff when it comes to people getting added into the grassroots program. Now I have, my, I have my predictions, but I, what, do you have any predictions? Maybe who you think will be added in for the next wave? There, Pat. Oh, Pat, man, and Kevin. Duh. Uh, <laughs> no, um, not really. I don't have any predictions because it seems. I mean. 
I, I, I don't really know who's applied. You know, I don't know if like the big mm-hmm. guys like Xperia or any of them have applied, uh, but you know, you would think you would think content like you know Nick, that, you know he streams a lot, think those kind of guys. But I don't know. Uh, I don't really have any predictions, but anybody who does, it's a really cool program. And, would just be honored to be a part of it one day if if I could ever oh, yeah. get to that status. But yeah, I think it's it's really cool what they're doing with that whole program. I think it's nice to see certain streamer, even you know, not as big of a streamer as you you know, a household name uh, in a video game household. I should mention, um, <laughs> you know, get the, that kind of exposure. It's really cool that they're doing stuff like that. Mm. I was, yeah, I think I definitely noticed that it, it's something where like your content really matters if it fits in line with the vision of like HCS. Exactly. Like, yeah. I, I know that I know that like Hidden Xperia has applied I think twice and hasn't gotten in each time. Or then you had like guys like no offense, but like Reclaimer, who's a much smaller guy in the community when it comes to like subscriber counts and follows on Twitch and stuff like that. But his content really fits well with the HCS vision. Right. You know. Because it's, it's not just like grassroots of just Halo. Right. It's, it's more HCS. focused towards like the competitive side of things, trying to grassroots grow that competitive community up. Mm-hmm. So, so, so people like when I added in recently, like Shyway, uh, Saiyan, uh, Reclaimer, uh, and Ishii, it, you know, he does a little bit more montage kind of stuff. But, you know, it definitely shows off like high skilled uh, players, you know, playing the game kind of thing. And they do seem to have a focus on Twitch as well when it comes to adding who they're going to add in next. Um, and so um, my predictions, I would say, definitely, I would, I think Trunks, if you guys know who Trunks is on Twitch, uh, I think he's a shoe in because he's partnered on Twitch. And he can drag in like up to like upwards up to like 80 to 90 or even, even over 100 viewers watching Halo 3 at once. And probably also Mint Blitz as well because he, he's a montage or kind of guy. Yeah, Mint Blitz. Yeah, even though I haven't really caught him on stream very much, maybe his schedule is different than mine. I haven't really seen him around too much. Um, but I, would, I, would, I think yeah, I know he's applied as well. I know Trunks applied, and um, and then me. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and then of course you have me. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like I said, like uh, yeah, like I said, community influence doesn't matter a whole lot. It's more about what does your content align with the vision that they have for it. Mm-hmm. So I, I wouldn't expect guys like Kenan Xperia. Or like Halo Cannon to get involved or be get added in to it, right. but um, yeah, we'll see. You know, it's basically just like, yeah, we like you. Yeah, you, I mean, I would see con- Nick. Nick. Nick does a lot of competitive stuff. Um, I could definitely mm. see Nick getting in, but I don't know how he's even applied or if he's interested in that program or not. But I don't know if you've heard anything on that. Like Uber Nick, you're saying? Yeah. No, he's in. He was like the oh, original, is he? one of the original. He has one oh, of the okay. original four. Like I added in, like him. Uh, vetoed, nated, and action man. Okay, so all, those are the uh, original. Edited. Yeah, and like all those guys, I mean, not so much Nick, he does kind of more like casual, like, but he does like try and do well, and he's one of the bigger streamers as well, so it yeah. makes sense. Um, but like, you know, like Vito, who's just like a beast at the game, Vito's just nasty. He's just champion his... and he, gets, he just gets championed in every playlist. Yeah, uh, nated, who used to be a former competitor, does like, you know, try hard sweaty stuff in halo 3 same mm-hmm. thing with action man he always plays halo 3 hardcore and so yeah so, their, their content kind of falls in line with the vision of like competitive halo hcs that whole thing so somebody like me who says halo 3 sucks then i uh i probably don't fall in love probably, <laughs> they probably ban me <laughs> now i mean you got like proximity and uh and stress you know they mainly stream halo 5 yeah yeah proximity is big on halo 5 and reclaimer yeah. too yeah but yeah yeah, I think we got kind of got over that enough on the yeah. grassroots stuff. So We're talking about to... HCS stuff, we got, actually talking about HCS stuff. We do have a face it event going on right now. Yep, yep. Which uh, we'll cover probably. I but... haven't. Be, yeah, we'll probably have to cover it later because I haven't been able to watch it because when their streams go live, it's two o'clock in the morning for right. me. I saw so Nick's going, team got like a, shut I, out. I a, yeah, like I have a job and stuff, you know. So I, I kind of need to like sleep. <laughs> yeah only thing but, uh, i saw on twitter was that nick's team lost like got swept like the first round or something like that <laughs> did you see his team name now yeah first boss oh first boss and the uh, graphic was so oh funny my God, just, like, it was awesome. the angry face emoji which is like hands yeah it's just like a guy he's just like first boss 
like oh, yeah. okay that's cool and uh they all had like their own like names like there's ginger one and ginger two yeah. like ogre one ogre two and then it's like uh fail itself i think is one of the names as well. yeah oh god it was so good but yeah these they got apparently yeah, I, I i guess i got swept which you're not surprising there they're just like yeah they're, they're just, just going like, to have fun they said you know yeah, they they're expect... like they're next like hey if we all pitch in like what it's not that much money we can say we did it it was probably and have a fun time yeah it's a good experience i'm sure for the lulls right exactly mm -hmm. uh but we yeah, have so uh what h h uh hardcore 2v2 settings getting uh put into halo 5 uh the official what file share yeah. from HCS? Or? Yeah, so now, yeah, the settings for 2v2, yeah, there's, because there's a 2v2 uh, Halo 5 uh, competition as well happening at this Faces event. Um, though it's, and so it's that's that was finalized, I think, like on Wednesday or something like that. And so um, right now you can grab that game mode from the official HCS uh, file share right now in Halo 5 if you want to do that. Um, I do believe they're looking to make it into the playlist as well. So, That'd be actually really nice to play some HCS, you know, settings for two v twos. I'm assuming Pat and I, I would love to see if we can grind our ways up, way up to Onyx on that one. Dude, I'm you down. Know. I'm down whenever, whenever you want to get super sweaty. Twitch.tv says Kevin Coolix. <laughs> <laughs> Quick plug. <laughs> Um, so yeah, you got that. You got that. To look forward to. I'm definitely would be down the gym. Yeah, as long as I have someone to play with. Yeah, on that one definitely. Yeah, I'm always that. down for doubles. Doubles is my favorite mm -hmm. of any game. Like if you ever like Pat two v two, I'm like, what what game? When and where? Let's go. Uh, <laughs> you know, the, the least amount of teammates I have to rely on, the better the way I look at. Mm -hmm. So that way, really, if we suck, I can just blame me and you and just yell yeah. at each other. Exactly, and then just like ruin a friendship. And exactly, just that's what Halo does. Yeah, <laughs> and um. I don't know. I haven't heard anything about the maps or anything. I don't know if they're going to be using different kinds of maps or anything like that. I'm assuming they probably used to use the same maps from 2v2, but then just uh, maybe, you know, play some, you know, power ups and weapons in different locations. And yeah, that's about it, probably. Yeah, some of those maps that's... on doubles are brutal on Halo 5. I don't know how much you've played, but it's not, not a whole uh, lot. Really. Some of them are bad, man. I cannot <laughs> stand some of the maps, like the verticality and stuff. I'm always mm. just like looking up, and if you high ground that is it it over gonna get a, a bad time it's a bad time sometimes <laughs> yeah like if they make some of specific maps designed for competitive then that'd be pretty nice but yeah that would with be. the fast turnaround that they needed for this i doubt that because it takes quite a while to you know proof a map to make sure it's good for matchmaking mm -hmm. uh like the btp update literally took like a year yeah i heard there's a uh, another update uh refresh coming to halo 5 later this year so does the refresh make it social again so i can have fun playing btp uh it's it's a uh different <laughs> game mode refresh breakout i uh, i can't say but i'll maybe <laughs> tell you afterwards um uh, uh, so mm -hmm. h2a race in mcc you want to go over yes. that one real quick too mangeese yes. mangai uh, mongooses yeah, probably if you're watching this video right now, you might have even cached a video of it. But I, I did get a chance to stream this a little bit uh, the other, on Thursday night. Uh, so you had two racetracks added in for uh, Halo 2 Anniversary. So if you search under, uh, was it the Action Sack playlist for Halo, for free for all, a player, Action Sack, Halo 2 Anniversary, you'll get a chance to play some races, which they do seem to be rather popular. I was streaming it the other night on Thursday night. And uh, it was coming up quite often. Uh, right now, it does seem like there actually is a bit of a bug. Uh, it was because one of the maps was added in from uh, Duquesne23. If you guys don't remember, know who he is, he's one of the more he's a Halo YouTube guy who does who has done mostly uh, like forging as kind of his thing. Um, he's been a little AFK for a while, but he's kind of getting back in the swing of things and making content and stuff. Uh, apparently, his map, which was Jurassic. Uh, they put warthogs on the map when it's actually designed for to use mo a mongoose. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't really play out exactly how it was intended, uh, but they're looking into that and they change that probably pretty soon. Uh, and, and also the other map, I can't remember the name, but it also uses warthogs, which I'm, from what I played, it does seem to be uh, meant to use a mongoose on that as well. Um, but they're good maps. They're not too crazy or expensive or anything, uh, but very well forged, fun to race on. And yeah. Uh, uh... I did, I did. I got a couple wins in, so I'm happy with that. After like the, the five or six times I got a chance to play a racetrack, 
Yeah, it's just good to play race. I love playing racetracks. I've never really got into race. You know me, I'm like a sweaty Halo player. So, but um, I've you know oh, I've always I kept used... up with Duquesne because ever since mm -hmm. I was like a kid, I, he was he was big. Like when I was in high school, like Green Skull days, Ready Up Live days. Mm -hmm. Um, but I used yeah, to sweat his... it up. Go ahead. Oh, sorry, no, I didn't mean to cut you off. Go ahead. No, it's Maybe. fine. I was just gonna say I've been <laughs> keeping up on his Twitter, and it it looks like he's making some really cool maps, man. Like I was like, you mm -hmm. know what, I I would try this. This this looks pretty fun. I do know Duquesne is like furiously forging a Halo Reach racetrack map Ooh. before the transfer comes around. So you definitely uh, might even see that for a uh, Ooh, action good. Like it's for uh, Halo Reach there. That's a good little segue uh, you did there almost, Kevin. Yeah. Uh. yeah. <laughs> but, uh... Ah, <laughs> oh, shit, I, was, I forgot what I was going to say. But, yeah, it's whatever. It you said whatever. something about getting sweaty in races. Oh, yeah, just saying, like, yeah, I used to play a lot of uh, racetracks in Halo 3 and Halo Reach. That was kind of when I did a lot of racetracks, especially in Halo 3. I loved racetracks in Halo 3. I was a beast in Halo 3. Yeah, I did a couple on Halo years. 3, but I never, uh, I never like, played it a lot. But, yeah, I remember trying it, and I was like, yeah, this is cool. This is different. Um, yeah. But speaking of game-type transfers and map transfers, so if you guys didn't know, we've talked about this several times. We've both both made a couple videos on this, but... On August 12th, there was the game type transfer, and on August 26th, we're going to do the map transfer. But the according to Postums, he made a tweet that said the copy has gone quite well from his understanding for the game type migration. So that went pretty smoothly, and if you guys have maps that need to get uploaded to your file share from the legacy Halo titles, Halo 3, 4, Reach, do that uh, on your copy from the 360 or via backwards compatibility on the Xbox One, go on ahead and upload those to your file share before the 26th. This is for maps only. You've already missed the date if you had game types you wanted to upload. It is This is a one-time thing. They don't plan on doing this again. So go ahead and get that uploaded, guys. And like I said, he said it went pretty smoothly, so that's really good news to hear. And if you're on PC, you also will be able to play these maps. However, if you want to access them, you have to get to an Xbox One first after the transfer to be able to access them on PC. If you can't do that, you could still play other people's maps on PC via custom games when that comes out. Right on. Like I said, I didn't really bother with it because I don't really have anything. Plus, I, but I did message my buddy who I did sell my 360 to. Oh. And I was like, I was like, dude, do you still have your 360? He's like, no, oh, dude, I got rid of that long ago. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm like, no. <laughs> Mine's in my freaking daughter's room, and I still didn't even bother. I was just like, eh, yeah, whatever. Man, for me, it'd be like it'd be like looking at old pictures, you know? Mm -hmm. For like, it'd be like, oh, I remember when I did that. Yeah, and then just, a cool but memory. then never really bother with it again for like another like eight years until you look back and like, oh, I still remember. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so yeah, uh, maps moving on the twenty six. Yep, looking maps forward to that on the twenty six. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. On right on. So uh next one, I guess we had talking about a uh, new job posting right there, Pat. Oh yeah. Maybe, uh, put it in the, the document here. Yes, good old Big Daddy Microsoft looking to cash in that money from us gamers here with their new microtransaction system for Halo Infinite. So I'm guessing uh I guess Rex will be making a return in some form. It may not be called that, but Microsoft is now hiring a quote unquote live design lead who will come up with strategies to keep people engaged with Halo Infinite for a long time after release. This includes all manner of things from in and out of game progression, social media engagement, and seemingly through some kind of microtransaction strategy because the, the actual description for the uh, job is as this. It says, design and deliver AAA player investment experiences that focuses on our fans and their desire to express their passion for our franchise included but not limited to microtransactions so i i expected this honestly um well yeah we knew know, that microtransactions were going to be in halo infinite it's a triple a game i mean we we all know it's going to happen now i am not a huge fan of the rec system in halo 5 i love the fact that the maps are free absolutely love that we mm -hmm. didn't have to pay for maps however I was not a fan of any of the maps that got released after launch. Like a couple of them were okay, but nothing that was like, "All right, this is this is great. This is this is solid stuff." If it yeah. meant that I had to pay for a map pack and get solid maps, I would totally rather do that. But at the same time, my other problem with the rec system 
is unlocking customizable stuff like armors through that rec system. I don't like the randomness. I am OG gamer that likes to earn their stuff. Like, oh, that guy has Hayabusa. He had all the skulls. That dude's got a katana, so he's got every achievement. He's hardcore. He likes Halo. Like, those kind of visual things and working towards those says something about a player. Not, oh, oh, look, he got that cool armor from spending money on a rec pack or just randomly getting it out of a rec pack. You know, like, it it, it takes away, it, it devalues customization, in my opinion, and I am a huge proponent of customization in games. But we do know that Infinite's going to have Reach-style customization, so... Maybe it's going to be a mix of the two. Um, who knows? Maybe, maybe you'll just get weapon skins out of microtransactions. Maybe they'll do like a free-to-play model where, like a lot of free-to-play games are doing, where you actually buy what you want. Like in Fortnite, where you, okay, this skin is in the store. You could buy that skin. There is no randomness to it whatsoever. You get that skin, but you pay a price, you know? Um, I'm fine with that. I like that better than random boxes, honestly. You put something out there, and I could, if I have to have microtransactions, you put that out there and that's exactly what I'm going to get. I can respect that because there's no shadiness involved in that, you know? Oh, yeah, true. Like, uh, I definitely would not, I do, since this is going to be like a full price game, right? Yes. There has to, nothing should be locked behind a paywall. Right. You should find, you should be able to um, logically be able to grind out items. And I mean by logic or like realistically, I should say, be able to grind out items that you want to earn in the game, or you can just buy them up front. Right. I know that um, like Apex kind of really did that originally. And so I know, but I know another kind of under heat at the moment right now with their current uh, loot box system that they're doing right now. Uh -huh. Though um, I would say that as long as like you have some kind of currency that you can kind of grind out and then unlock things uh, to what you want to unlock. Um, like so, like what, like what some of Apex is originally was doing, pretty mm -hmm. much, or like, like Halo you Reach, fight. you know, like the credit system. You grind mm -hmm. out those credits, and then you, you know, you buy what you want, or maybe you could just buy credits. Like I'd be fine with that. Either you grind out credits as long as it's fair, or you could buy credits and use that towards armor. You know. Yeah, totally. I mean, I, I know that they're sort of doing a like have a bit of a season pass thing when when uh, Reach comes to MCC. Right. Obviously, that's not a season pass because you don't have to pay for it. Exactly. But obviously, but it's the same system. Right. It's the same any money. unlocking co concept. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, you know that like, that's what they're doing is testing out exactly <laughs> that that you know season pass system for Halo Infinite. They're like, well, does this work? Does the community kind of interact with this quite a bit? Mm -hmm. You know, that's why they're adding it in now. <laughs> Which sure. this even like all this I mean this all screams games as a service like we mentioned earlier, so mm -hmm. this is going to help the longevity. Like this person is basically in charge of helping the longevity of Halo Infinite, and they've already like you said experimented with this kind of stuff in MCC. Even look at uh, Yap Yap's Rebellion and the Flood event that went on. Like those things were really cool, and I I'm thinking they were testing the waters for Halo Infinite to have like limited time events. And this is all stuff we've never seen in Halo. This is all stuff that makes people come back to the game. Like, look at Apex Le Legends. Like you said, they have a limited time event going on right now where you have exclusive loot that you could only get during this event. And then it can go into the loot pool afterwards. But you have a way to earn this loot right up front during this event. If Halo does stuff like that or like a season pass model, I like that. I That kind of stuff, as long as I don't have to pay for it, sure. Because, it, you know... If it's a full price game, I'm not paying for no damn season pass. You're going to make Halo Infinite free to play, which I don't want, but there's been rumors about that in the past. I I guess you could do a season pass, but don't do that, please. Just take my $60, do a season pass for free, and put your microtransactions in there, but give me season pass as well, like maps and stuff for free, and, and keep updating the game over time. Yeah, as long as you just don't have progression or just custom as long as customization isn't randomized like it wasn't halo 5 exactly because yeah. then it completely devalues what you unlock exactly because you're like oh you just got lucky exactly i mean even like you guys like when i see guys with like fancy ass skins like in fortnite i'm like hey you know you put some money towards the development team i appreciate that you right know, it looks exactly cool. exactly and so or like in apex legends same thing you know mm -hmm. where you, exactly where you just like you buy what you want 
Exactly. And that's how it should be. And maybe have loot boxes in there to have like a random chance to, once you hit level 50, you get a loot box and then you might have a really rare chance of getting something cool for free. Yep. Something like that. Yeah, I agree. But, yeah. Yeah, good, good way to bring that back on track when I talk about this position specifically because they, uh, I know they have like a live team for Halo 5 and that team has been really in charge of making sure like uh, updating playlists, updating maps and things yeah. like that to keep like the game fresh and team, fun. I think they call yeah, it, like right? A, yeah, yeah, they, yeah, sustained team, live team. I think they kind of interchange, use that interchangeably. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, like I so said, they're definitely going to be needing this for Halo Infinite if they're going to use in this game as a platform for future updates when it comes to the game because what i would love to see is just have halo infinite be like the halo game to play for the next five years and all you do is just you know update the game with like maybe new weapons maps maybe new campaign missions things like that and that's what they're really trying to do with this new engine is make it so then creators or the i should say developers have the ability to really add in stuff more freely because the previous engine was very difficult when it comes to adding in new content exactly and I think that's what they would want, you know, like you make Halo Infinite last long, then you have all that time in between to make your next mainline game and put that same amount of effort that they've put into Infinite. But now you already have that engine built, so you don't have to, you know, put a couple of years behind building that engine, but you can now take three, four, five years to make your next game and, you know, still have people enjoying the game from the previous series, so... The, the less stress that 343 puts on themselves to make the next game, I think the better and the better product we'll get in the end. So I'm all for playing Infinite for set amount of years, you know, if they support it, you know, correctly. And uh, yeah, I, I, I mean, I've, I look at me, I'm about to go back to Destiny in September when it goes free to play. That game's pretty old now. And I can't wait to see what this new dlc does if they do like big expansions to halo could you imagine like you know the the possibilities are endless with a games of service model and it's really like frowned upon by a lot of people but i don't mind it as much as other people well, it was frowned upon because it, when it was initially stated of like this is a game for a service when they first started bringing that word up like what five years ago or something like that like with like uh like siege when that was first mentioned yeah, siege destiny uh, division destiny thing yeah divisions like that. they all those games had terrible launches <laughs> yeah yeah they all did it wrong yeah absolutely yeah but now they're doing it right exactly siege, like siege is, is strong up. yeah um cs goes it does that same feature as well mm -hmm. if i remember correctly they're, and they're killing it when it comes to that stuff as well games like you know, warframe still, and they that's yeah. doing good you know yeah, because there's really there's no need to keep releasing a new Halo multiplayer every two years because like basically I to me Halo multiplayer peaked at Halo Three. That's just my opinion. Right. <laughs> you might have a little different opinion there, Pat. But as like I said, that you can only re, you know perfect perfection so much to the point you're just changing things just to change things for the so sake of change. Give, yeah, to give a reason why you should buy this game because yeah, exactly. this new feature it's not just new maps. And that's where I think Halo really ran into that issue. Same thing with Call of Duty as well, mm -hmm. where like these games, like they perfected their game loop. And then they were like, well, how do we change it up to make it new and fresh, make people want to buy the next one? Like, well, no, don't change it. I like how it is now. Exactly. Yeah. They had to like, you know, change something to give something flashy. They give a reason why they kind of advertise the game. Mm -hmm. And so uh, Halo definitely ran through that when it came from 2010 to about 20, well, to now, really. Uh, <laughs> yeah um so but now with like the way technology and the internet works now that uh we can you can just release a game and have it be halo you know and then you can modify it and change and update it however you want whatever the community wants update it so then uh we all get the halo game that we all want and deserve and that's what this new engine is really gonna help provide this is basically gonna be the halo this is this, this new engine is gonna provide halo for the next like 10 years like this is a game this is a franchise changing uh game that we're going to be getting here next year so exactly it's big yeah it's, and i don't i don't envy 343 at all because it has so nope. many <laughs> huge decisions to make yeah oh my god and if that flops oh my god i can't imagine there it, there's no way a halo game can flop. Yeah. like you know like to me there isn't a bad halo game like i've said that before there are ones i enjoy more than others but I've enjoyed every single Halo game, yes, including Halo 4. Every game, I will say every game has some aspect that you can enjoy. Exactly. So more, Halo Some more than others. <laughs> can't do wrong. Yes, exactly. Halo can't do wrong, in my opinion. I can't ever see Halo flopping, but 
Hey, crazy things have happened. I mean, Zelda, I never thought Zelda could flop, and then the CDI games came out back in the day, and those were, like, some of the worst games ever, but <laughs> we, we don't talk about that as Zelda. Yeah. But, yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you want to get on to the uh, Halo 5 modes? Sure, Pat. Great transition right Thank there, Thank you, man. sir. <laughs> so, uh, if you guys probably know, I've been playing. We, uh, we recently received uh, Forerunner, Forerunner Slayer, which rotated in for Roaming King. Rest in peace, Roaming King. Love Rip. you. Yep. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so, we've got a chance to play a little bit of Forerunner Slayer the other night with, like, Jimbo and Rap Scallion. I think, I think you were there, right, Pat? Like, you were, we were all playing mm, together. Yeah. I don't think I played that. I just played uh, it for, was... like, the first time today. But, yeah, okay. it's, I yeah, like okay, it, though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's a fun little take, you know. Yeah. You get to play a chance to play with like some different weapons, like uh, Song of Peace. I know is in there. Yeah, close to, the close fist is in there. Uh, yeah. Idex Signet, I think is how you pronounce it. It's in there. That's which is like a scatter shot variant. I think is in there. Yeah. So you don't know, get a chance to play some rec weapons. You don't get a chance to usually play. It's actually plays a lot better than I thought I was gonna play. Better than freaking Castle Wars, dude. I will take this any day over Castle Wars. I will <laughs> never play that playlist again. <laughs> And uh, well, then uh, you will be very happy to know that Action Sack Roads hates in for Castle Wars Thank on the twenty second. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, very minimal upgrade, but I will take it. Mm -hmm. And also, right now, by the way, uh, right now you guys got a chance to play Warzone Assault. If you guys do not know, Warzone Assault is double XP right now, and so it's a great way to grind your XP boosts, and also it's a great way to get more rec points if you want to save up your rec points when the legendary uh, XP boost pack drops. So grind that out. And yeah, I'm gonna do then, that tonight, um, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, just further down the road, the kind of look forward to. Uh, you got August 29th, Rock and Rail will be moving in for a full runner slayer. That is the game mode you want. If you're grinding 152, that is your mode. Play nothing but Halo 5 while that game mode is out in yep. double XP. And then Warzone Turbo on that same day as well. Cool. So you got that to look forward to when it comes to the next few rotation game modes in Halo 5. Sweet. But yeah. And I think I'm on uh yeah, I think we, we have off at Labor Day, so that's Labor Day weekend, the 29th, right? Correct. Oh yeah. We could be grinding some rock and rail. Cool. You might be. I'm gonna be well, busy. Yeah, I know you're gonna be stuff. busy, but I will be. Mm -hmm. I'll be streaming, you know, in case you miss me. Drop mm -hmm. by. Like, yeah, you know, how's Pat doing? Yeah, you know, yeah, just a little twitch.tv slash the Patman Gaming. Ooh, yeah. he's quick with them plugs. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. awesome about that. so yeah. i guess that's uh that's about everything on the show huh pat yeah that that about wraps it up there kevin it was a, Ooh, another yeah. good show i read it as always numero seis numero seis in mm -hmm. the books so yeah we uh we'll do our outros here just want to thank you guys too for coming by if you've listened this long you guys are amazing thank you for the overwhelming support on kevin's channel for the podcast it's been awesome to Thank you all for that. Um, Kevin, where can people find you in case they're listening on Podbean or Spotify, things like that? Well, I guess you're ready to kind of answer that question. Man. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, I do want to say that I've actually been really surprised with the support on the podcast here. Uh, I mean, like I, I tweeted this out earlier. I'm like, I'm just really surprised like the, the viewership and interaction we're getting on this podcast. And it's really making me more motivated to keep going because when i thought i was like you know what this is something i've always wanted to do it'll be a passion project of mine i'll upload this maybe get 100 views with two people in the comment section both saying first right you know? yeah <laughs> but actually uh, we've got, got you know, pretty decent traction on it we've got some good review you know people have been really happy with the uh podcast and how it's going so i just want to say thank you all for your interactions with it it's been going really well and uh, I only see things going up and getting better from here, man. So yeah. I'm really excited about this podcast. Uh, you can definitely expect more in the future. Definitely. Uh, so yeah, we got. So if you guys want to keep in touch with me, got my YouTube channel, YouTube.com/slash Kevin Coolx. I uh, got that for Kevin Coolx Halo on Twitter, uh, Facebook at Kevin Coolx as well, uh, Instagram Kevin Coolx, and on Twitch as well Kevin Coolx. Continuity for days, except on Twitter because. Yeah, my that's... account was stolen. <laughs> <laughs> but so you guys, guys can check that out. And if you're too busy to type in links, you can just type in Kevin Cool X and then the word Halo after it. You'll find me. Yep. But yeah. Or uh, you know, just look at the Kevin links. All of our links down in the description below. So if you guys just correct go down in the description, you will see all of our social media links, all of our streaming links, our channels, everything will be down in the description below. 
Mm -hmm. And where can people find Patman Gaming content? Well, I'm sure this podcast ain't enough. Right. It ain't enough. You got to scratch that Halo itch wherever you can. So YouTube.com slash Patman Gaming. You guys could find me there on YouTube doing Halo news and the occasional Halo lore videos. On Twitter at the Patman Gaming. On Twitch, the Patman Gaming. On Mixer at just Patman Gaming, but that will be changed soon enough to come in line with everything else. So at the well, Patman Gaming. But for now, it's just Patman Gaming. I mean, um, just to be clarified, just to clarify, you said just Patman Gaming. No, it's Mixer.com slash Patman Gaming, not dot com slash just Patman Gaming. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, you're, you guess you're right, Kevin. Confusion. Yes. I understand the confusion. You're right. You're right, Kevin. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. So, yes, what Kevin said. We'll just go with that one. But, yeah, thank you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching or listening. So we uh, hope to catch you guys next weekend. Thank you all for listening. Catch you all later. Peace. Thank you guys so much for tuning into the Halo Outreach Podcast. While you guys are here, go on ahead and subscribe to Kevin's channel and head on over to my channel, Patman Gaming, and click that subscribe button for me. And if you guys want to further scratch that Halo itch, click in the description down below to see all of our social media and give those a follow as well if you love Halo as much as we do. I hope to catch you guys on next week's episode of the Halo Outreach Podcast. And until next time, guys, we're out.